Mr. Honester cannot tell us what the area is like at the bus stop across the road where vehicles are stopping and idling all day long, um, where people are standing right next to the curb, where children are standing right next to the curb. This monitor cannot tell us. He could, the data from this monitor can be used to model what that pollution is like, and that's what it is used for, modeling. But actually, if you want to know what pollution is like, then you need a monitor in these locations. This monitor cannot tell us what pollution is like at the schools, like the school up further up the road. Um, where again, vehicles are, are, are caught behind traffic lights idling outside that school, when actually pollution levels outside that school, by use of diffusion tubes, yes. appears to be higher there than it is on the high street. So, we need other monitors, um, smaller monitors that can be moved to these locations. Now, people say, well, these smaller monitors aren't as accurate. They can only give us an indicative reading. Well, okay, um, give us an indicative reading, give us an indication, but how accurate are they? Are, are they very close or are they very far away? Now, technology has moved on over the years. Um, you've probably seen another post I had here where we actually had an HU mesh monitor being co-located. Well, at the moment, it's this. This is a EarthSense Zephyr monitor. Um, EarthSense, um, been working with the University of Leicester, uh, Professor Ronald Lay, who was doing experiments with the Zephyr years ago with the young lad who was backpack walking along the school and tracking pollution. Um, you know, these guys have been working at this for, for years and years. Um, and I wouldn't say it's perfect, but it's pretty damn close. So, you know, this is the unit that was used in the BBC Two documentary, Fighting for Air. So, you know, we, we look and say, well, how accurate are they? So, a way to find out is to co-locate them. Take the monitor, put it into a unit like this with a reference station for three or four weeks. It's been here uh, since before Christmas. And then look at the data check it against the reference station and say, well, how close is it? Once you know how close it is, and actually you can say, can we scale it to be even closer? You can then take the monitor and you can place it in other places and suddenly start getting very accurate readings of what pollution is like in these other places. We're at the stage where we can no longer just rely on an ever decreasing number of these reference stations around the UK, on an ever decreasing number of these stations, which are falling out of service. The fact that the number is decreasing, the fact that more of them are falling out and taking months to be repaired could be an indication of how important the government thinks it is for us to effectively manage and effectively measure pollution in London and in the UK. Because obviously when you have these monitors and they say that we've reached toxic levels, then they get fined by the European Union. Um, you know, they get taken to court by clients first. You know, it's not what they want. So the question is, are they doing everything to make sure that they're in working order? Are they doing everything to make sure that they are recording pollution levels as accurately as possible? Um, personally, I've taken a choice to start getting units like this. Well, this council has been kind enough to allow me to co-locate it with a reference station. Um, TRL has been kind enough to help me make sure it's all set up. Um, it's a bit of a pain um, for them and for one of the council, but they've been really flexible and done that because this is actually going to be the future way forward, that we get these units, we make sure they're calibrated, we make sure they're co-located, we make sure they're accurate, and we get them out measuring um, the air that our children are breathing.